hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to create your own scrunchie tags you're going to see how easy it is and in this video i'm going to be showing you step by step on how to create your own tags again these tags doesn't only have to be for scrunchies these tags can also be for your jewelry or anything in general that you would like to create your display cards for all right guys so let's get this video started for your supplies you're going to need a pair of scissors the euro hook punch this is optional if you don't want to cut with your uh, cutting machines and also cardstock. This cardstock is 100 pound, but you can also use 65 pound cardstock. I like the 100 pound because it's just thicker. You're going to use the choice of adhesive, either glue or double sided tape and software of choice. I'll be using Silhouette Studio. And if you have a cutting machine, whatever cutting machine that you have today, I'll be using my pair of scissors because I like to cut by hand. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is open up your software. I'll be using Silhouette Studio. I do have Business Edition. Now, if you don't have Business Edition, you can still do this. Another thing is if you don't own a Silhouette cutting machine, you are still able to do this. All you have to do is design your template and then you're going to print it and cut it by hand. I do recommend Business Edition because you are able to use all the different icons. If you would like to get Business Edition, check down below. I do have my affiliated link. And also, if you want to download this um, software for free, I also have a link down below. I did a whole tutorial on how to download the software for free. I highly recommend it. This software is amazing to, this, uh, to design in. Now, to get my template, you just need to go to anginascreations.com and purchase the scrunchie tag template. Once you purchase it, you need to unzip the file first. Don't forget that step. You need to unzip the file save the file to your computer and once all the templates are saved into your computer your next step will be going to file you will go to merge once you go to file and merge you're going to look for wherever folder you saved your template Now, if you have basic edition, which is the free version, you need to uh, click on the silhouette file one. If you're using Cricut, you'll select the SVG file. But also, if you have business edition, you can still use the SVG file. They're the same file. But for the people that don't have business edition, you have to click on the silhouette file. I'm still going to click on the silhouette file one. And then I'm going to click on OK. Once I click on OK, the um, templates are here. Now you have the option to use whichever one of your choice. This one, the light blue one, it already has the Euro hook uh, cut out for you. But if you're cutting by hand, then you will use the pink one. But either or, you can still use either or if you don't want the opening here, you, you'll still use this one. I like to use this one and I have the Euro hook punch because i don't like to do print and cut usually silhouette student is always messing up with print and cut and i don't have that type of time okay so i'm personally going to use the pink one and then i'll uh punch out the euro hook myself okay so you still have the same option if you want to do the print and cut you'll use the other version now we have this one now you are going to go to bing google etsy um creative fabrica wherever you want a background from I am doing a TikTok order, so this is the reason why I'm going to design this one like this. So I just went to Bing. I know a lot of people always say, you know, you always say go to Google, but you're actually using Microsoft Bing. To me, it's the same thing, all right? I looked up cute TikTok backgrounds, and I want a background that it's going like all around, that it's not just going one way diagonally, vertically. I want one that's going all around, so I kind of like this one that the background is going all around. Then I clicked on the image. Then once I click on it, I'm going to right click, copy, go into silhouette, right click and paste. Also, before I start, if you are using Cricut, you also need to make sure that you unzip the file, save the template to your computer. Then you go into Cricut. You're going to open up Cricut Designs page. After you open up Cricut, you're going to go to upload and upload your template, okay? I recently just got a Cricut, all my group members. If you don't follow me on Facebook, I have a Facebook crafting group called Angina's Creations Crafting Lounge. They actually just gifted me a Cricut, so I'm, I'm going to start learning Cricut so I can start doing Cricut tutorials. But as far as I know, you will open up Cricut, 
then you click on upload and upload the template okay and then i'm going to give you the measurements that i'm using for Cricut users you're going to size your template the width will be 2.392 and the height will be 5.959 this doesn't only have to be used with scrunchies you can also use them for bracelets or anything that you would like to do okay all right so i have the back on and i'm going to click on it and i'm going to right click and send it to the back when i send it to the back that means my template will be in the front and you could just size your image however you want but i'm actually going to show you a trick then you're going to click here somewhere on your screen drag your mouse to select both i'm going to go to my modify panel on my right and i'm going to click where it says crop then i crop this in here as you can see you can barely tell what the background is while you have your template selected you're going to go to your fill panel it looks like a paint palette you're going to click on the third options that says pattern you're going to click on advanced options and then where it says scale i'm going to scale it down and then when i scale it down you will see that my um background is getting smaller all right you see that it's going all different ways all right let me zoom out a little bit now i'm also going to show you a trick because when you fold this in half whatever is in the bottom it needs to be upside down all right so i'm actually going to leave it here and i'm going to click on my template right click and duplicate then i'm going to put that one right here my knife tool is on my left i'm going to click on my knife tool up here it's going to say straight and it's going to be on auto apply I'm actually going to show you a trick that everyone also forgets to do. I'm going to click back on the arrow. I'm going to come down here to my settings on my bottom right corner where it says tools. Everything is has on choose to select. So after creating a shape, it says choose to select. After drawing, after using eraser, after using knife, everything is choose to select. It's usually on default that it says continue using knife if you leave it like this which i'm going to leave it on apply and i'm going to click on okay so if you have it like that and i go use my knife tool and i start cutting my knife tool is not going to get off my cursor is i'm going to be able to keep on cutting and i don't like that so you're going to have to always go back and click on the arrow and let me actually undo all those cuts i'm going to go back to my settings go back to my tools where it says after using knife, I'm going to click choose to select, click on apply and click on OK. So when I click on my knife tool and I do my first cut to cut straight, make sure you hold down the shift key to cut. So I'm actually going to let me zoom in so you see where I'll be cutting. So but have my knife tool selected, hold down my shift key and I'm actually going to cut around right around here. And when I let go of my knife tool, you'll see that my cursor goes back to the arrow so I don't have the knife tool again. All right, so let me zoom out. I actually don't need this part. The reason why I hold down the shift key is so I could cut straight. I'm going to actually delete this. I'm going to click on this that we cut. And right here, you'll see squares all around it. Those squares is for you to put your image a little bit smaller or bigger. So I'm actually going to click on the one that's right here in the bottom corner and I'm just going to make it a tad bit smaller. I'm going to click another color so you can see and I'm going to right click, bring it to the front and you see when I made it a little bit smaller, it's going to fit right there in the front. All right. So we're going to design this as well. So I'm going to go back to Google and I looked up TikTok birthday wallpaper. I like this one. I'm going to right click, copy image, go into silhouette, right click and paste. I'm going to click on this image, right click and send it to the back. And using my little squares in the bottom, I'm going to size it so it can fit there. Now you can use any backgrounds, any image of your choice, depending on the theme that you are doing. Okay. So you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. So now while it's like this, I'm going to select here, drag my mouse to select both, go to my modify panel and click on crop. So now this is cropped in here and this is actually going to go here, but we're not done now to 
bring in individual images all you have to do is go to google and look up png images png images are transparent background images those you actually have to right click and save to your computer once they are saved you're going to go to file you're going to go to merge and then you're going to bring in your image for this design i'm not using no images because this background already have all the images that i want it has the microphone it has the music notes and all that extra stuff so now to type in silhouette you will click on the a on your left go to the a on your right select the font that you would like to download free fonts you could go to the font.com and download free fonts i have a whole separate tutorial on that also the link is down below you can also get fonts from uh, creative fabrica i'm also affiliated with them so i'll also link that link down below all right once you click on the a on your left click on the a on your right select the font that you want click anywhere on your screen and start typing i'm just gonna write the number 16 i'm going to click anywhere on my screen to get off the edit mode i'm gonna click back on the number 16 i'm gonna go back to my pink fill which is the looks like the pink palette that's the fill option right here you will have a dropper the reason why i want to use the dropper is because all these colors i don't want to use none of these colors i want everything that i use to match here i am going to color the words white first so i'm going to color the words white you're not going to see it because we are the white paper i'm going to go to the outline which is right under the fill panel click on the color and i'm going to click on the no color option the no color option has lines going around it so i'm going to click on it as you can see you might not even see it because we're on the white uh, paper so we're actually going to move over here so now while the number 16 is um selected we're going to do an offset so the offset is the double star double star icon on your right i'm going to select it it's going to say offset and then right here where it says distance play around with the distance of your choice i'm going to bring it down maybe to 40 0, 0 0.40 then i'm going to not unselect i'm going to leave it just like that go back to my fill panel click on the dropper and then i want to select that same color reddish pinkish color so it can match go to my on, uh, outline color and click on no color now i'm going to select here on my screen drag my mouse and group this together all right now i'm going to go back to my a on my left and type th I'm gonna color. I'm gonna repeat the same steps. I'm gonna color white, no outline color, and I want an offset. group it together i'm gonna make this very small drag my mouse to select everything and then I'm gonna make this really small and then you have like a green button here that you can actually rotate it and all right now I'm gonna repeat the same steps I'm gonna go to the A on my left A on my right select the font and type her name I'm going to color it white no outline color make an offset and group it together
Now I'm going to click here on my screen, drag my mouse to make sure everything is selected, right click and group it together. Now I am going to put this around here. You can use your arrow keys too on your keyboard to line everything up how you want it. Now I'm going to right click, duplicate this and holding my shift key and pressing that green button, I'm going to rotate it to make sure it stays straight. I'm using my shift key. Let me zoom out and I will place this one down here. You need to make sure this one is upside down. All right, I'm gonna zoom out. The zoom out and zoom in button is right here. It looks like the plus sign and the minus sign. That's where you zoom in and out. I'm gonna click here and drag my mouse around everything and group it together and you are done. Now, before you print, you need to make sure you set up your paper size. So the paper icon is on your right where it says media size. You're going to click on it and you're going to select 8.5 by 11 because that is the paper size you're going to be using. Sometimes your screen might look different than mine because some people have their transparency on zero. I mean on 100 and I have mine on zero just because I like to see my white paper. But some people just like to see their grid. I like to see the white paper. Now you're going to place as many as it fits on the screen by click on it and duplicate. You could fit up to four on the eight by 11 paper. You're gonna rotate this one. Okay. Now, if you don't own a cutting machine, you're just going to print this out and cut it by hand. If by any means you want your machine to cut this out while being on your paper icon, you're going to click on the third option and where it says registration marks, you need to turn them on. And where it says thickness, bring it all the way up. Now, as you can see, when I turn on the registration marks, you need to organize this better. So you're going to put it everything that's inside of your red line that's what the machine is going to cut okay so you're gonna right click and duplicate if you have anything outside your red outline you're going to have to manually cut that out by hand but it's fine because you want to maximize your paper so let's say i put this one right here don't have anything touch your registration marks okay so if i leave this one right here as you can see some of it is out the red outline so the machine is going to cut this out but it's not going to cut this out down here so once you have everything set you're going to you're going to go to send over here and as you can see silhouette is going to want to cut everything out even your words so you're going to have to select everything and then you're going to click cut um, click cut to edge so it only cuts out the outside then you're gonna once you have everything set here you're going to send it um, to cut but you need to print first so you're going to click on your printer icon and then you're going to click on print here you're going to select the printer that you have i have an eco tank 16600 i'm going to click on preferences I'm going to make sure that also my document size here before I print is also on 8.5 by 11. A lot of people are not doing all those steps. So I like to print from my back tray. So that's why I have paper source paper tray document size 8.5 by 11. And the paper type, I like to print a presentation paper mat. No matter what I'm printing, I always like to print a presentation paper mat. I'm going to click on OK and then I'm going to print it out. I'm going to actually cut this out by hand, but if you're using your machine, you're going to load this to your mat and send to cut. All right. So I'll be right back once I print and once I cut everything. Okay. So here everything is printed and cut. And all you have to do is grab your scrunchie. If you would like to learn how to make your own scrunchies, check down below. I also have a separate tutorial on how to sew your own scrunchies. Very big, beginner friendly. You don't even have to be a professional sewer. I go step by step and I'm showing you how to create your own scrunchies so all you have to do is get your tag you're going to put it in the middle of your scrunchie and then here you can use your adhesive your choice of adhesive some people also like to use a stapler but I like the more um, 
like I like the look that people don't even know how it's glued there. You can't just put a staple there and call it a day. So I'm just gonna put glue right here and then adhere it together. And I'm using my own brand glue, Angina's Creations Crafting Glue. It is on my website, but right now we are out of stock, but I will be putting some on my website soon. All right, so you can actually leave it like this, or you can use your Euro hook and create that punch on the top. So all you have to do is put your tag upside down, try to go right in the center of your tag and punch. Once you punch, you have created that. All right, guys, so here is the final result. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this quick video. If you're not in my Facebook crafting group, it is called Angina's Creations Crafting Lounge. Feel free to join my crafting group. I would love to see all your work over there. If you would like to purchase anything from me, feel free to follow me on Facebook or Instagram at Angina's Creations LLC. Also, if you don't have social media, feel free to email me at Creations at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time I upload any new videos. And like I always say, I hope everyone's having a blessed day.